Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Now this, as you can see, is a very special video episode, and I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. But first, a couple of announcements. My book, We Don't Die, which looks like this, just went on audiobook a few days ago and it's available on um, amazon.com audible.com and in a few days time it'll be on itunes a hundred percent of the proceeds go to fund we don't die radio show so if you're somebody who loves these episodes and one of the many people that write me looking for more all the time it's 10 hours of listening to me and my story as I narrate the book, and I'm honored to have the wonderful Dr. Bernie Siegel read his beautiful foreword. And just for about 20 US dollars, uh, it's a great investment, and also, like I said, it goes to fund this radio show, so you can feel good about purchasing that. Second announcement is that the Afterlife Symposium just announced its 2018 dates. So September 14th through 16th, 2018 in Scottsdale, Arizona, you can hear experts talking about cutting edge information about the afterlife and afterlife communication. You can meet like-minded people from all over the world. And 2017's event was awesome and sold out. So if you're interested, go to Afterlife Symposium Dot org to find out more. So now why is this a video episode? It's because of my special guest who's my friend. His name is Bar his name is Mark Bedwood and he's coming to us from Perth, Australia. Mark mm -hmm. is going to do a demonstration in trance mediumship today. Well for me it's tonight for him it's today as we're about 12 hours on uh, opposite sides of the globe right now. Mark is a wonderful man I met earlier this year at the Arthur Finley College. He's an international psychic medium so that means he not only connects you to your loved ones but he is a special guy that provides guidance and support and helps you answer questions and he's got a very very good heart and soul. He also teaches uh, workshops and classes and I again I'm so grateful to call him my friend to find out more about him you can go to his, his website which is markbedwood.com so coming to us again from Perth Australia I'd like to say a warm welcome Mark Bedwood welcome to we don't die radio oh, hello Sandra the, <laughs> um, you're right we're 12 hours away so that I'm 10 in the morning you're 10 at night hey isn't that amazing and beautiful day bright yeah. blue sunshine start of summer is just around the corner for us and start of winter for you correct it's very cold outside i've had to pull out my winter jacket uh, but i love the magic of the internet and skype that we're able to do this so um first of all yeah thanks i've had to push it on especially for the occasion because it's warm here <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's always good. To turn everybody off straight away. No, it's good to connect it with you. I mean, we were in such a small group when we took the trans mediumship course at Arthur Finley, and you're just somebody who is an extraordinary medium. And yeah, you know, we got along so well, and I just I'm delighted that we're reconnecting here. Yeah, it's a great honor to be uh, connect to you both professionally and to be a friend. So yeah. It's nice to Sweet. So, Mark, how did you get into this world of mediumship in afterlife? Well, uh, I think my story is probably a little bit different to most of the other people that I've heard on your recordings or the show. And because um, a lot of people are here uh, talk about they from birth they had experiences of waking up and those people at the end of the bed and right. hearing voices and uh, lots of things like that. Um, but that wasn't my case, you know. I was very different to that. Um, there was some stuff which happened, but it was very small and um, really easily discounted as being your mind or just shadows. And but my my development happened with hard work and development at a later date, you know. And uh, I got to say, it all began one day through meditation. And in meditation, then I received a blessing. But I'll tell you more about that later, maybe. Um, and then everything opened up. So I still think that maybe I was born with this gift because I know my parents have it and uh, my sister as well and others. Um, 
but it was just the waking up for me it took really 40 years I guess before I was ready and uh, then it just started and it happened so quickly thereafter um, really quickly uh, but I, I put a lot of it down to meditation and um, being in a meditative state where this opened up something that was inside of me did you know your parents had it? Uh, what happened was my mother um, had saw lots of things and saw her mother, um, I think it was the day after she died, and um, saw spirits around her bed. Um, but one day my mother um, was standing at the end of her house and um, a gypsy came up to give her a reading and said, I'll read your fortune. And she said, okay. And the gypsy said, well, you're going to lose two two husbands and the first one is going to be in their 40s Wow! and this really scared her and shut her down totally stopped and this was obviously quite irresponsible and um, turned her gift off rather than opening it up you know and uh, so consequently she had all these experiences and all this ability um, but just never used it and even today um, she's now got dementia in a care home and she doesn't know things you know that, that's happened outside of the care home and doesn't remember the early day stuff but can tell you one things that have happened the previous week before because she talks to spirit really so yeah so my for my stepfather who died um, has been to her and said the house is sold and there's been a marriage and she didn't know of either of these two things but she told us about them one day clear as day out of dementia um so the clarity is still possible mm -hmm. so she got she, her gift was turned off um but it hasn't gone away and I, I think that's an important message too you know in that um we've all got a gift it's just really how close to the surf it is for some um I'm sure you understand that a lot of people, um, or everybody, is psychic, and mm -hmm. um, you've all got that ability, but so few people um, use it or express it in, in any conscious way. Um, probably right. unconsciously, we have a bit of intuition and a bit of a feeling of something that needs to happen or be said or to contact people, you know? Um, so we all use our intuition, but then don't develop it a little bit further. So with a little, little bit of practice, a little bit of development, um, your psychic ability can lead from just a little bit of knowing into an understanding, you know. So it's there, it's just how close to the surface it is, I think. And uh, you need to bring that out of yourself and use it if you want to. Hmm. When um, did you first um, find, uh, start feeling that life after death was real? Was that something that you always believed or was it after your meditation practice? Um, no, it's something that I've believed for a long time mm -hmm. and I've found um, we all begin. We all want to know when our path, when we're on our path, and doing our right. chosen behaviour or whatever we're meant to do, our mission. Um, and when you start your mission, uh, whatever it is you're supposed to do, with a little bit of hindsight, you look back over your life and you realise that you were on it before you actually thought. Uh, so I had that experience. I never thought my path started until, let's say, 2005. Um, but probably five years later I was reading books which I thought I've read this book before and I realized I'd read it back in say 2000 or something you know um, so my path actually began way back then and that was the little seed which sprouted you know um, so it, yeah it, the the event happened during meditation but the path really started before that mm. uh, the path was there with me for a long time and um, the path is an interesting question. When are we on our path and when are we doing the things that we should be doing or what should we do, you know? Right. And I'd say that's probably the biggest question everybody that comes to me about and uh, what is my path? What should I be doing? Where should I go? What should I do? You know, all this and we're all destined or feel like we're destined for something greater. Something that's true. Bigger. How do you answer you know? that question? Because I'm sure it's everybody's got a different answer. and. Is it for you to give the answer? Or is it for them to explore? Um, well, I actually follow two ways, and uh, intuitively, the will pick which is the right way for the um, mm. the person that's there, and, and that is exactly what you just said. Sometimes you've just got to encourage people to walk the path and discover, mm. find out for yourself, you know, um, because of the journey, not the destination. 
and in doing so you, you might tell to somebody to well let's explore every option let's look at yoga and tai chi and let's look at uh, spiritual or mediumship work and let's look at vision quests and everything else mm -hmm. And that can be very valid for lots of people to find lots of different ways to find their right way. You know? At the end of the day, it's all a spiritual journey, isn't it? Um, and the other way is sometimes you need to be quite um, quite firm with people about what their definite answer is. And depending on their level of understanding of themselves as well, is understanding the depth of their being. And I say this because um, really your body is not really interested in a spiritual or life path you know it just goes where the mind tells it to go that's you know? true yeah and, and uh, your spirit is already on a path it's just observing what's going on so it's really your mind that wants this spiritual path and wants the certainty of the path and um some of that can be ego and some of that can be something far deeper than that and if you if you want to follow a life of spirit, you must understand that um, your spirit knows what to do, when to do it, and has directed you on the path, and you're on the path already. Um, but your ego wants something bigger and something greater, and wants miracles to happen, and um, wants the miraculous to the biggest audience. Of That's the right. Month. There we go. Right away, we've got to have it right away. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Immediate. Take, 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 and you're on the path, you know, and uh, that's just not what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on the person and depends on what their truth and understanding is. And so some people you ask or suggest you explore and some people you say, well, it's just your ego wanting this, you're already there. Um, but you got to know which one is the right way to do it. And there, there are other possibilities too. So. Yeah, it is all about the journey. It's always so good to hear that because I'm always looking into the future and someday and when is this going to happen but it's all happening in the now isn't it that's right it can only happen now oh. yes. so your mediumship how did it like what came first the chicken or the egg so to speak your uh, we're going to talk about trans mediumship of course but there's um, evidential mediumship which is mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you uh, working with a client and letting them know who their loved ones are and things like that. Did that come before uh, the trance mediumship or did you have things start to happen within meditation? Um, well, let's tell you the meditation story. And okay. Then we'll uh, tell the meditation oh. story. <laughs> 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 See, it's good because I don't know that much about you, <laughs> but I still love you. You know. Yes. Well, back in 2000 and five or six I think it was um, I went to I'd already been meditating for about 12 months but getting nowhere and um, really struggling with the process of meditation what is it what am I supposed to be doing and I went to a, a temple to um, out of interest of the building and the place they said look that's a course starting on the weekend so I signed up on the spot and there I went and um, the first hour is understanding about what meditation is and the talk about the process and we come to the second hour and we said, okay, let's meditate. So I close my eyes and this is day one, meditation one, and as I close my eyes, a drip of water hit me on top of the head, right in the middle of my head, like bang, and not just a little drip, it was a heavy drip. <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, I'm sitting under a leaky air conditioning vent. You know, typical, this is so bad. And I thought, no, there's no water. I thought, no, it must be a spider. And I thought, no, that's ridiculous, you know. And as soon as I had that thought, um, I went off. I disappeared. I had an out-of-body experience, and I went off to what I then discovered to be, or I didn't know at the time, to be what's known as the Akashic Library, and um, had all sorts of experience while I was there. And... The meditation was only about five or ten minutes long, so when I come back, I asked the teacher, I said, I've had all this experience, what went on? Well, uh, he didn't know, and he referred it to the head of the temple, and the head of the temple came back two weeks later and uh, said, he's a key ring. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> what's that? What's that? What's mean? that? Well, mean? Actually, and basically, they didn't know either, you know, um, but took the keyring as a blessing. Um, and I kept this keyring with me. And this keyring at times of trouble has come in very useful, you know. Well, the, from that meditation, things started to really open up for me. Um, I've had the same blessing again um, while meditating in my house and sitting, meditating. This time it was like a, like a, what do you say, like a little cup being put on top of my head on my crown chakra again. And I found that this opened me up even further. And then one night, one day, um, I went to a spiritualist church, and in that spiritualist church, um, at the end of the service, a lady came to me and said, I have to give you a book. And I didn't know this person, I've never met her before, and I said, okay, I'll have a book. And she bought the book the following week, and I uh, started to read it, you know, a week later or whenever. And, um, and because of the weather here, I was sitting outside and I was sitting on a chair outside and I just started the book and has, uh, I was about page 30 I think and all of a sudden a jet of water hit me right in the middle of the third eye and right in the middle of my forehead mm -hmm. and when this happened I thought, oh the hose is on, there's a problem with the watering system, the guy next door has sprinkled water over. And my logical mind jumped up and we checked everything and none of this was there. And I realized I wasn't even wet. And um, yet it was a very definite jet of water in my head. Um, now each of these experiences probably happened over about a three or four year time frame. Um, but during that four year time frame, my, I opened up. And I opened up, I became a spiritual healer. Um, started to work with uh, people who wanted um, energy, energy work to help them heal. Um, I then started to open up mediumistically. Uh, my trans mediumship began at the same time as my evidential mediumship, um, which seems a little bit um, wrong way around, but that's the way it worked for me. Yeah. Um, but the healing ability really led me into trans, not the evidential mediumship. Um, uh, because they're both very passive states where healing you just letting the energy flow through you from from spirit through you to the client um, well it's exactly the same process really with um, trans mediumship you're just letting the words flow through you to your client right. uh, but if anything then you're actually a little bit more subdued and a little bit more out of it if you like with trans mediumship Mm -hmm. Before we go on, Mark, what is yep. written? What is written behind you, on your wall? Okay, let's have a look. Can you yes, see that? Well, I um, can. Well, there's a whole. The whole of the house is actually white, except for that wall there, which is um, what, what I call it a dirty yellow. Um, it's a very subtle yellow that's kind of washed, you know. Um, but the rest of the house is white, and one day I found I need to paint this wall, and so I painted it this color for some reason. Now, why this is connected is that um, some of the guides that work through me, um, I now, I guess, have five or six different ones, um, but one in, one in particular, um, a monk uh, called Chow, um, he was the influence of this colour. And I thought, well, why this colour? Why not red, green, blue, or whatever? Right. I mean, of course, the spiritual world, most people think it's purple. But anyway, I ended up with yellow. And so one day I'm doing research to find out about who Chow is and um, in discovering who he is and who he was um, led me to understand that yellow is his colour that he works with and what's written on that wall there is uh, Om Shanti in Sanskrit and Om being the call and Shanti meaning peace and it's peace that the quality that he pervades and Whenever I do a trans mediumship demonstration uh, in person, generally, um, I always say to people that this is not about the words, this is about the feeling. Mm -hmm. Words come through and they're beautiful or whatever needs to be said. But if you don't feel the emotion that's with this, the love and the peace and the contentment, then frankly, this hasn't worked. Right. And uh, the words I could 
sit and read a book to you and, and you could just think it's that. Um, but feel the feelings of the words when they come. Mm-hmm. And so that's why that's there as well. And again, I didn't know why I was writing this, but I was writing that. So Om Shanti, peace. And it's all very, very connected together. Absolutely. So the whole message comes together very well. Now, when Chow came through you, was he a man that actually walked the earth himself? Or how did you uh, research him? Was it through meditation or real, you know, looking in books and computer and things? Yes. Um, well, he was a man that walked the earth. Um, he was with me, I reckon, for at least 18 months before I started to do any research. Um, and the reason for that, I, the words to me and the feelings were so important. Who he was became secondary, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, because of the belief that if we're all spirit, we're all one, then we're all him anyway, you know? Right. And he's us. And ironically, he does speak through other people as well. And um, I was helping a lady on the other side of the country here um, undertake a, a training in trance, and he spoke through her to me. Wow. What are you doing, <laughs> what are you doing there? You should be here. Yeah, you know? that's wild. And, um, Yes, and he's told me before that he's working with people, other people, and he works with somebody, um, somebody in London or at the Arthur, at the Arthur Finlay College, he said, and um, there was somebody that was there or is there mm-hmm. that he works through as well, and so I started to research this man to find out who he was, and I found I found it, um, and I've asked for evidence to confirm that I was finding the right the right um, literature on him yes. and which I then got and I found out that he was actually connected to the the Duke of Zhao way back in Confucius time and he was involved in the, the, what was the dynasty's government at that time and his, his teachings were morality and doing the right thing and that's something which I've found I live by too. Sure. You know what thing to do and just do that. And that's his influence again. Um, so it took a little bit of finding, but I found it and I, I was told where to look and there it was. That is so um, cool. So, I so think. it's been around for a while. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's taken people, like group sittings of three or four or five people, all onto a visualization of where he used to live and. Um, what experiences they experience and talks about people's life, um, your experiences, you know, through this trouble here. And to me, that's the evidence and that's the the real crux of the matter, you know. And um, so in a class only two, two weeks ago, it was um, a demonstration within the class I was teaching about how to uh, connect through to spirit, how to work with spirit. And... Um, I wanted to give a demonstration of three different entities, all at the same, or one after the other, so that people could see the different personalities yeah. coming, not just the words, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the different accent. And I said, look, this is only going to be five minutes. It's only going to be a real short demonstration, just so you can see the personalities. We'll probably just get hello, thank you, goodbye, you know. Um, but the message came through in those two minutes. There was one person in tears, and there was one person said, "I thought he was talking purely about me." Sure. And um, that's the beauty of it, you know. From what I thought was going to be a nothing experience, well, not a nothing, a, a limited experience, became uh, one major experience for two people at least, you know. Uh, absolutely. The times mm-hmm. I've experienced someone speaking in trance. You can just feel it. I get goosebumps, right, on me, and then, but it, it just resonates as truth, and it, it's mm-hmm. not just like ordinary conversation. It just, it's something really profound. Um, so that, that's exactly the comment I'm saying is that you need to feel this yourself mm-hmm. and feel it and understand it. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the words then start to have a different meaning, you know. It's like trying to say love, but then when you feel love, it's so much different to the word love, isn't it? Yeah, you know? it sure is. Uh, and in that case, that's what the message is. Right. Um, so sometimes it's not about words at all. It's just about the feeling. And I know I have uh, um, once, it was only once, I had, did a trans session with somebody where there were no words. 
and it was just the feeling of being held and wow. looked after and set in that beauty of well, the beauty of spirit that's the only way to describe it and that was enough that was enough it didn't need to be anything else mm. now mark for people who don't know much about trance do these entities actually step into you do you merge with them how does that work because I, I think there's always a fear uh, you know people being possessed and all of that um is there a, a way of explaining that how that happens it's a very diff very definite um belief system um i come across it a lot where people say will they leave um am i going to now be possessed for the rest of the day um do they step inside me what if i can't get rid of them and, right um but the truth is they don't and they can't um and the reason for that is because you're not inside your body you're outside your body but we believe we're inside our body we do you got to say more about that we're outside our body yeah well where do you exist inside yourself uh, you know yeah you think of that we would say right i exist in my mind that's what it feels heart. like because i'm speaking through the like. face yes um but answer the question do you do you use your eyes to see or um are you your eyes and clearly you use your eyes to see or not your eyes because if you lost an eye you're still here aren't you, you right know? right um so that there's something beyond the physical and if it's beyond the physical where is it in your body and if, if you uh, lose an arm and you put one arm in one corner of the room and you're in the other corner of the room where are you you know right uh, and then what if you lost both arms or both arms and both legs and where there's 51 percent of you in one corner of the room and the rest of your body's in the other you know if you believe you're the body then you've got to be in the parks over there haven't you yes but, that, but that's just not true yeah i've heard it explained no. that the soul or you know our soul self is so much bigger than we are you know just absolutely. giant all mm. around us absolutely yes well um that's how you become one um the oneness or the unity is the emergence of all souls into one soul or spirit mm. if you like you mm -hmm. know so again we find that we're here but we're not here. We just experience life through this body. Right. Um, so we are separate to it. So you're not in the body, so spirit do not enter the body. Uh, and it's the emergence and communication of one spirit or one soul having influence on another. Mm -hmm. And so it tends to be a mental to mental communication. Now they're um, using, it's coming out through your mouth and your gestures yep. but are you yep. listening or are, do you feel like you're taking a nap somewhere else i mean are you um, present a little bit my the, the truth for me is um i vary uh during all of the um experiences i have in trance and even during each trance session um it starts off where I'm a little bit light and then I go deeper and then I may jump up to a lighter state or a medium state and then drop down and then jump up to light. Um, so I tend to vary a little bit huh? and depending on what I'm doing. So uh, my trans healing tends to be a lighter state than my trans philosophy. And also we're practicing physical mediumship here. So I tend to be a bit deeper again with that. And, um, for me, it feels like when I'm in the deepest state, um, it's like sitting in nothing, yet being held by your mother. <laughs> if you can relate to that feeling that there's just this comfort and serenity of being held in this place, yet there is nothing there, hmm. just not, but I know I'm there, not here, you know? Right. Um, but at times then uh, some word or something will happen and I jump back and uh, so I lose that state at times. So hence it's very difficult when you get noises that happen. So um, if a dog barks or um, a flash of light happens then it can take me from a deeper state to a lighter state very mm -hmm. quickly and even bring me into a full conscious state. And that's like being woken up from a deep sleep on the couch by somebody trying to wake you up because you've got to go somewhere, you know? Right. So it can be a little bit unnerving and um, can hurt at times, you know? Um, so at its mildest level, it's like being woken up from a deep sleep suddenly 
um, just something a bit more substantial than that as well. Mm-hmm. Well, for That's our our interview today, you've been generous enough to volunteer to do a demonstration, and this is my first <laughs> video interview, and I don't know if it's your first interview, but I think it's it's perfect, and I'm said this to you before we started recording that I'm clear that this is not about us so however the spirit world wants to use both of us of course I've got a a big mouth and love to get the information out as far as I can because I know people are looking and and totally uh, support you and your team however energetically I can do that but is it something that it takes a, a few minutes right for you to just relax and go into that and do you know have any idea who's going to speak or you, you put in requests or you know what what happens with the intention um i've, I've already set the attention here to give some philosophy message okay um so the intention is to talk to you about something but i don't know what it's going to be that we have to talk about so i haven't got a clue or who's going um, to speak I, you have several people that could speak right Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I have three very prominent ones which come through, and I know I've got all three of them standing here, and um, but I have others which have been through as well, and um, I only know the names of two of the three. Um, the third person tells me nothing and won't tell me anything, um, but he's like sitting with your headmaster who wants to tell you off, so he, he tends to be quite sharp wow. and to the point. And, um, uh, one of them, Charlie, um, he likes to talk but say nothing and just lift the vibration and make you feel warm. He sang in trans and um, he's helped people lift their spirit and also taken care of some trans clairvoyance as well. Um, and then there's Cha, which comes through, who's a lot softer and gentle, hence wearing the microphone in case um, he is very quiet. Sure. Um, so his personality is very different. But he holds you in a, some kind of love and peace and feels beautiful. Um, so he's very different to them all. Um, so I, I've set the intention for some philosophy. Um, I hope that's the way it's going to work. Well, um, I'm does. open. And now, I obviously won't interrupt, but if there should be a time, uh, you know, is it, can I say thank you? And I mean, is it um, like I'm having a conversation or if... Uh, one of them asks if I have any questions. I mean, is it interactive like that, or could it be? Yes. Um, um, we'll talk, or they'll talk about whatever it is that needs to be spoken. Okay. Um, they join in with your energy as if it's a conversation. If it's a philosophy speak, then you may as well just let it run. Yes, of course. Uh, but if it's not clear, then ask a question. Okay. Um, I, found, I find that it works really well as a chat. As a conversation about things and if you want to ask questions about anything else uh, perhaps towards the end or whenever you feel that's the right time then ask that okay and they come through um, but one thing I'd like you to do is set the intention of love and peace and let that come through and it will be returned back to you and sometimes we get some sound effects on the line um, and sometimes we get other things that happen too and it's only with listening to the recording a second and third time that we hear them and I've also found sometimes the recordings changed Wow! Uh, but that's not very common it just happened though. and then at the end is it clear when it's time to wrap up there'll be a Absolutely. goodbye and then from your point of view I'll wait until you come back and say open your eyes and uh, let you speak because I know it Mm. it takes something to come back you know just to Mm. to the present yeah yeah Um, it takes me a few minutes just to drift down and I found the longer I spend on this the better but um, it takes a few minutes to drift down and to drift back up right and to come back into the waking state yeah Uh, there is a different end Um, one of them always says goodbye and the other one always says may peace be with you um, as a definite end. It's always been the same. Um, and the, the headmaster like one um, just goes. He's, <laughs> he's just gone. <laughs> and, um, he's disappeared. Um, but you'll find that we, we may have more than one person that, that comes through but we'll find out about that too. Um, and I do know that I have other people which are standing here waiting to talk. 
Um, so there's not just three here, there's more than three, but um, it's going to be one of two, which will probably do most of the conversation. Okay. So we'll and at, at the end, um, when you are back with your eyes open, um, are you in a, like a groggy state or should I wrap up the episode then? You know what I'm getting at? I mean, I won't make you sing a song or do anything crazy, <laughs> but um, I definitely want to encourage if if you're willing, because I do know that you are a medium and you do help people in so many ways that uh, to make sure people know that they can reach out and contact you through your website. Mm, sure. Right. Um, absolutely. I come back at just a little bit of time to wake up. I, um, I just seem to come around a little bit slowly, like waking up in the morning for me. Right. Uh, uh, and then I'm fine. Okay. Um, sometimes my voice is a little bit croaky when we come back. Um, so expect also my voice to change. Um, so that will happen. Okay. And if it was a little bit darker, we may get some shadowing on the face, but um, I'm not sure whether we'll get that now because it's quite bright. Um, so we'll find We'll just out go about for it. I think this is fun. And we don't have any time constraints. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, it's the beauty of having my own show. I don't have to have commercial breaks or anything. So I just think <laughs> it's it's great. And I'll send you love and in the world love and peace and everyone who is listening or watching this right now this is uh, just it's very special to me and mark is very special to me and so um, i'm excited that we get to participate in this mark okay. it's going to take a few minutes just to take your relax. time right. yeah. yeah i'll just be here sending love and i ask the listeners to just know yeah. when he's ready to talk because you'll see hear the converse, hear the words to begin um, and it'll happen. All right. All right. Well, cheers. Water, not cheers. vodka. I <laughs> 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 get myself all comfortable. Okay. I will, I will begin.
Hello. It is a privilege and an honor in being able to join you and to work with you for just a small amount of time. Mm. Thank you. I understand and I remember that you have heard my voice before. Yes. And it is with love in my heart that I greet you once more. And it is now a pleasure of all, all those on my side to greet you and to be with you. Your light is very bright and the brightness of your light is what is attracting many different energies to you. And this light is one which has been worked on for some time. And the light is such a joy to behold because it is a light which draws people the similarity of colors and the brightness of that light, the intensity which naturally attracts others which are of a similar light or are drawn to the light because they seek guidance. And you are the holder of that flame and that flame burns very bright. Mm. Continue your work, my friend. I will. Because this which is important, and it is important not just for you, but also for many others. Mm. And many others are yet to come. 
and they will come and they will experience all that is to be given. But the beauty of the spirit is not in receiving but is in giving. And that is why the spirit world need channels and avenues if you wish to express themselves through. So when you work with spirit, then it is of course, it is spirit that is of service to you and not the other way around. Because we need the expression to bring the message forward. And how else can we do that? Well, there are a number of ways and this way is one. Well. But it is important that the light continues to shine and be bright as an attractor. It is attracting people all of the time. So the work that you undertake is of importance for your side and also for our side. And that is why we come to you today to work with you and to be with you. But you know of many presences which are around you anyway. And these presences are of influence to you in your life. And they will continue to be of influence to you and be with you for many times to come. Mm. So even at your darkest hour and the times when you feel like you are alone Realize that you are not. You just need to change your awareness from your physical to your spiritual. And then you will realize then that you are never alone. It is only the body that can be alone. The mind may feel alone, but it is just an expression of the universal mind. And the world of spirit is never lonely, but it can be quiet and still. Because it is in the quiet and the still that everything is manifested. So it is only when the mind finds its still point that the invention can come. Mm. And you will hear this many times from people in different professions who say I just understood or I just found out and this inspiration comes from the world of spirit from the silence not from the noise because the silence creates all and that is how the creator is everywhere the creator exists in the silence and exists in the noise because in truth the noise does not exist. But that is not the way that it is perceived. Perceived through the physical form, the noise and the life and the events which are inside you and outside you seem to have a noise all to themselves. Yet it is the silence where everything exists. The deepest part of your knowing, of your understanding, comes from that silence. So that is why, with understanding and meditation, that you can connect to something greater than yourself. It is a process of just getting out of the way rather than a process of learning and waking up. My friend, you have everything and not just you, but every person that hears these words. The beauty of their being already exists and their true nature is already there. 
there is no effort in your true nature. The effort only exists in your false nature, where you try to retain an identity of who you think you are. So that side is full of effort and full of drama. Yet your true nature is not. It is full of quiet, full of peace, full of joy of creation and the knowledge of everything. So it is through the silence that you find out what has been there all of the time. So your path is never to learn something. It is rather to remember and to let go of that which does not serve, whatever is in the way. So the truth need only be recognized, not bought or not learned. Just recognize the truth. And this is how spirit is everywhere. And the creator is in everything. It is in the wooden chair. And it is in the computer. It is like looking at a book and not seeing the white page. Just seeing the words. Yet it is the white page which holds the words and thus is more important. So it is the intention of your life. If you wish to be near to your creator, that you call it God or universe or by whatever name it existed by, then all you have to do is be the qualities of that which you are trying to connect to. So if you want to be like your God, then express yourself as God and then you'll be one and unified in it all. And when you have discovered that, then there is a joy of existence which goes beyond any new cow or house, because that does not matter. Your spiritual self cannot be damaged by anything. It cannot be hurt or broken. It cannot be removed. It can only be covered over. So, your work, the work of everybody, is just peeling back the layers of the onion to discover the core of existence which sits there, which exists as your true nature, and it is that. The biggest part which gets in the way of all of this is just three little words. Those words are I, me, and mine. When you see it all as yours, then you have an attachment, an attachment which will ensure that you will be reborn very quickly. But it is the letting go of what you think is yours and who that you think that you are, which removes all selfishness and then makes you serve others and help them. Because there is nothing that you can have which you can take with you from your side to my side. It is all needs to be left behind. Your memories will exist in, in the lower realms of the spirit but that personality will soon disappear as you progress. And that personality will lead you to the silence, to the everything, 
to the unity of all. So yet again, I talk to you about silence. And it is that which is the clarity that is required by all. So peel back your ania and find out what is there. And do not add more layers to your existence. So your first step for those which are beginning their journey is to be truthful to yourself. So if you are an angry person, then be an angry person and do not try to cover that over. But then explore is anger who I am? Or is this what I am expressing at this time? And then, of course, you will start to peel back the onion layers rather than have more layers to it. It is very difficult in the early stages to tell the truth. So begin by telling the truth internally to yourself because there you try to lie and even deceive yourself. So begin by telling the truth of that level and once you have done that and mastered that you will find all of the other steps will fall very naturally in the same way. By telling the truth to yourself, you will discover that your heart opens. And when your heart opens, then the Creator can come through and you will experience more joy and more peace, which are the essential characteristics of the Creator. And it comes into the world by an open heart. If your heart is not open, then you will not the joy and the love. Yet there are many which choose to cover their heart and to project it. Protect it from the hurts and the pains that they have experienced in early parts of their lives. Yet, it is this which holds you back and brings the past into the present. It's time to let go of all that does not serve you and to let your heart be open. And when it is open, then you will help others and be with them because there is no other way than to express the joy of love than externally. It is impossible to give away all of your love. It is endless. It is impossible to give away peace and have none left over. And knowledge, when it is shared, does not leave you. Just means that there are two people with knowledge. It has not gone from one to one. So we'll give it away. And you will find if you feel you are lacking in any particular thing, then that too should be given up. Though if you feel like you are lacking 
in love and you should give away love when you feel like you are lonely then you should work with other people which are lonely and then you will realize that two people together cannot be lonely And between us, there is a connection of joy and love which will arise naturally. As long as you choose to get out of the way and to let it flow. So give away whatever you are lacking. And I hear the words of people saying, does that mean that we give away our money or our house? You should understand what your house and your money represent for you. So there are people which are attached to these and see their nature as being related to their money or their house or their So it is your attachment that you can give away and free yourself from that burden. And in freeing yourself, you have peeled another layer, a layer of the onion. So give away the emotion of contact, connection, attachment to this material form and eventually you will see that it is not who you are and then may choose to give away the action. now for you to feel the emotion of the event and to feel me around you and to feel the connection of two souls merging in this side. So let your joy be your guide and let your heart point you in the direction that you wish and we will all meet you with a celebration when you are alive at the place of your heart. it is there, in your heart, that you will first feel a soul. Hmm. Thank you. May peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Do not be afraid. Do not be scared of the storm. For I have heard many storms. Do not be scared of the world. Because I have heard many bad things. Do not be scared of the action of others. Because I have endured it all. Connect again. To your light and let my light be your guide. Let my light lead you through your times of darkness. come back and I, well, lately I'll come back and I feel, remember I got cramping I think. Oh no. But, um, I don't feel it when I'm there but when I come back my feet must have been in position for I don't know 30 minutes or the cramping back in my leg. It only comes back when I come back. Oh. First one was chair. Yes. And 
The second one's a lady that's only just made herself known, as in two, three, four days ago. And there's a gentleness and a depth that's just huge. Huh? But um, I haven't got a clue who, who, what, why, where. Don't know. Uh, um, I don't know who the second one is. Uh, maybe I'll find out. Well, the words um, were beautiful. Really? Um, something about silent, I remember. Something about silent. Yeah, let her light be my light or our light in right. dark times and fear. Our sound sounded a little funny, so I don't know if it'll record that way or not, but given the nature of what we're doing it <laughs> the fact that we could have a little uh, static is understandable I'm sure hmm. well I'm getting close now. Um, as I say I, I don't know what we spoke about I just remember the word silence and that's all I got this time um, so maybe the rest makes sense for you or for whoever needs to hear it. Yeah. Um, there was a feeling towards the end I had of um, serenity and love and like a channeling of just the emotion that I felt. Um, we kind of picked up towards the end, but um, and then I say just that one word. So. I felt it. I felt lots of love and lots of peace. Mm. Yeah, it's really mm. special, Mark. Mm. That's my pleasure. Really, really special. And I think for our listener, or our viewer, I should say, for our first viewing episode, to see Mark and just to get what a authentic, caring, loving man he is. And after spending the week together at Arthur Finley College, you are all about service and helping your fellow traveler. So you're a good man. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, after a period of time on your journey, then there is no other choice but to uh, help another. And um, that's how the love flows, you know? Yeah. And that's it. Mm. And anything you want more of, give it away. You don't remember it, but those are the words that were coming out of your mouth. All right, okay. Oh, there's so, so much more. Away. Well, the maybe I'm practicing oh. already. So, give yeah. It away. The beauty of this is, message. the beauty of this is that we have recorded it, so you get to see yourself in action, or those working through you, and hear the words. Yeah. Well, Mark, our connection is is seems to be going downhill a little bit. Uh, you're coming in a little fuzzy to me. Can you still hear me loud and clear? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, it broke up. Yeah, so. yeah. I I think our connection is going downhill, but sounds like it. It does. So maybe we'll connect again soon. Hey, okay. We certainly will. You take care, my friend. Definitely. And for our listener, who I think you can still hear me or see me, I just want to let you know that this is my dear friend, Mark Bedwood, and you can go to his website, markbedwood.com. And he is a medium, a teacher, um, filled with love, filled with service, filled with wanting to make a, di a difference and um, he does sessions with people internationally through telephone Skype whatever technology we have um, he's a really really good man if you want to reach out to him and um, I'm hoping he comes to our symposium in September we'll see if we can make that work out in Scottsdale Arizona and I want to remind everyone that our home base is we don't die radio.com and you can listen to one of 217 episodes now and if you did listen to this and not view it I, I um, 
offer that uh, you go to YouTube and you can just type in We Don't Die Radio and this is episode 217 and you can actually view it. You can view the conversation of Mark and I and those who spoke through him today. And um, yeah, in closing, I, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to my special friend Mark halfway around the world. <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, just I love it. I love. I really do love it. And I want to th- say thank you to those who spoke through you, and to know yeah. that that message was not just for me. It was for all that were listening and watching, and all that do in the future. It was definitely a message that we can all take to heart. Uh, that we are not alone, and and let your light shine. And even in the darkest times, remember there are those with light that are around you and to mm-hmm. quiet your heart and that's yes. the the way to access all of it mm-hmm. yeah and services yeah, even what you're saying <laughs> you have to listen to what saying. yeah you have to listen because that's just a snippet that's just a snippet uh, but I do encourage you to uh, find uh, Mark and Mark you are on Facebook as well correct Yes, that's right. Yeah, they can find me on my Facebook page as well. And um, but mm-hmm. through my website, it's really good. So yep. that seems to be the most contact comes through there. Okay, and then just beneath this episode, if you're uh, viewing this on YouTube, is a link to Mark's site and to we don't die radio dot com. And uh, if you are someone who's suffering from grief, on my website you can join what I call the Insiders Club. It's my email list. Uh, but I don't send you too many emails, but you can get a free chapter. Well, it's more than a chapter. It's the whole book of We Don't Die. Uh, and I have a very healing audio called How to Survive Grief. And then also I wrote a, a just a short five-page document called 19 Reasons to Believe in the Afterlife because your friends, your loved ones did not die. They may be invisible to your eyes, um, but they are there within your heart and in reality and spirit world. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain, and I'm delighted to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I do believe with all my heart that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. So I invite you to make this a great day. Let your light shine, serve others. And I think that's where the real joy comes. So thank you for listening, or thank you for viewing, and we'll see you soon.